Alright guys, so here we are for episode number one of season two of F1 2015 career mode. Now in the first season, if you haven't seen it already, go check it out. It was an amazing season. We came so close to winning the Drivers' Championship in a Williams. This season, we'll be driving as Max Verstappen in a Toro Rosso. It's going to be more of a challenge, more fun, more battles, more everything for Season 2 of Career Mode. It's time for the first race. Let's go. Round 1 of the Formula 1 season begins today with practice here in a wet Melbourne. The teams will put behind them the issues from pre-season testing. What matters now is what the teams do this weekend. My initial reaction to this weather forecast was not good. I was not embracing the start of a new season in a brand new car with a, a fully wet weekend, but hopefully it's just rainy for practice. It normally doesn't rain in Australia, but for some reason the, the weather seems to turn up for this event. But um, in terms of the setup, we're still running with the Canada setup that we used, what, 15, 16, 17 days ago. That's a long time when you consider that this game is only three or four weeks old. So... I've got a lot of confidence in this setup and I want to use Season 1 setup as a base setup to, just to see where Toro Rosso stands in this field. Um, I believe it's only a few tenths uh, slower than Williams so we should be there or thereabouts. My aim for this first weekend is to qualify in the points and for the race finish in the top five. So that's the aim. But um, in qualifying, uh, not, you know, not qualifying, in practice here, I didn't want to do too many laps because I didn't really know what the forecast was for the rest of the weekend as we have a little mistake there on the opening lap. That seems to happen a lot in career mode episodes. The very first lap in a new car, I seem to make a mistake, but then the rest of the rest of the session is fine but yeah as I said if it's raining for the rest of the weekend I don't want to do too many laps on this set of intermediate tires but at the same time if it's not raining the rest of the weekend then this session is essentially pointless so I only did one lap in this session got a feeler for the car and uh, now it's time for qualifying welcome to Melbourne where qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix should be getting underway shortly so jumping straight into qualifying here first time in this car on a set of option tires i got to say, it feels very nice, very pointy when you turn the wheel. It's much more responsive than the Williams, and I feel that's going to, um, I don't know, play into my hands a little bit when we get to street circuits, especially this one, just getting into short, sharp corners. The Toro Rosso feels very nice uh, with the initial turn in, but first lap, we went purple with a 27.6. I believe that was a good lap, so um, the car balance feels very good at this stage. I was not expecting it from a Toro Rosso. I was sort of expecting to be... I don't know, on the fringe of, of the points, or the top 10 rather, but um, starting our second lap, we uh, went in way too deep, locked up and went through the kitty litter there. So we'll need to uh, bring it into the pits, put on a new set of tyres, three laps of fuel and go out again for another run. So we're in P4 at the moment, so we're looking very good at this stage, much quicker than what I was anticipating uh, coming into Melbourne. So this is the end of our second lap here, and uh, I believe we're a couple tenths up, so we'll see where we end up at the end of this lap. Opening DRS through the final corner and the run up to the line. What is it going to be in Melbourne? 127.5. So we only just improved there and uh, that moves us up into P5. So after that lap, I just brought it into the pits. I couldn't really improve after that. I just felt like I got the most out of the car. The gap to Raikkonen was pretty big, so I didn't feel like I could do that. So we're going to save a set of tyres and just go straight to the race here for the Australian Grand Prix. The crowd are here and here in force for what is going to be a fantastic day of racing. Welcome to the Australian Grand Prix. What a great start to the season for Nico Rosberg. He's on pole for today's race. He'll be delighted with how qualifying went yesterday, but knows there's a lot of hard work to come before he can secure that race win. Well, Nico will be focused on the task at hand. He's on pole position, he's proven his speed, and if he can just stay out in front, he should be able to create a gap. So I think he's got a good chance of victory today, as long as he has no car issues along the way. Looking beyond the front couple of rows, who else do you think is on for a good race today? I thought Felipe Massa's long run pace in practice looked strong, and he also had good single lap performance in qualifying yesterday. I'm sure he'll be wanting to convert that into points today. So here we are, lads, for the first round here in Melbourne. My home race, personally, for me, myself, but Max Verstappen, I, I'm sure he'd want to do well for himself, being his very first race in Formula 1. The race strategy is a three-stop, so looking like a very high tyre deck style circuit here in Melbourne, which is very interesting, because in the past in F1, 
Melbourne has been a traditional one-stop, but here we go for the very start of Season 2 of F1 2015 Career Mode. Away we go. It's been an average start wheel spin of the start. Daniel Ricciardo, fellow countryman, trying to go up the inside there into Turn 1. We hold around the outside and maintain P5. Massive oversteer through Turn 2, and uh, Ricciardo is going to try and sneak it up the inside now coming into Turn 3, but we're going to try and fight our Red Bull stable mate here, round the outside, almost making wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact there. We have the inside for turn four, and back into P5. This initial start to the race has been very, very exciting here. Being Max Verstappen, I want to try and assert my, I don't know, dominance, try and prove my talent here in F1, being a rookie in this series. Coming onto the fourth lap now, we can see both Ferraris battling it out here for a final spot on the podium. Raikkonen getting a massive amount of wheel spin on the exit of turn four. And uh, this has just allowed them to fall into my clutches, really. I felt like as the race went on, tire wear was not exactly an issue for me. We, well, compared to the AI, it wasn't an issue. So uh, I felt, you know, as the race went on, I got quicker and quicker. So that was uh, very, I don't know, confidence inspiring. And as you can see, we're all over the back of Raikkonen here. We're going to try and find a way past him very soon. He's getting held up by Vettel here, and uh, he's being very stubborn and not letting Raikkonen through, so this little Ferrari battle here is going to cost them possibly a place to a Toro Rosso driver. Now we're into P4. Next up is Sebastian Vettel. He gets good drive off the final corner, so that meant we weren't really able to uh, attack him uh, for a few laps here, but as you can see, lap 5 trying to push the boundaries here. We ran out wide onto the curbing here, and had a massive snap of oversteer. This Toro Rosso does have a few weird moments where you lose the back end quite massively. It's definitely not as stable as the Williams, that's for sure. But anyway, lap six, we're all over the back of Vettel once again. And we're going to try and sneak it up the inside here with DRS. It looks like the, the straight line speed in this Toro Rosso actually isn't too bad. I just didn't, for me personally, I didn't feel like I had any kind of deficit to the other cars, which was... Very interesting. When I drove the Red Bull in testing, I definitely felt like there was a lack of straight line speed there. But as you can see, we got past Vettel up the inside. This is his on board from the replay. He has the inside for the left-hander, but he tried to hold around. Well, he didn't even try to hold around the outside. He just drove himself off the racetrack. He could have held around the outside. I left him some space, but he didn't want to bite, did he? So lap seven, we're now catching up to the back of Rosberg who was also going very slowly in the last two or three laps. I'd say Mercedes were struggling more so than Ferrari because they had about a five, six second lead over Ferrari, but then in the last two laps, they just completely died there. Speaking of dying, it looks like Rosberg is probably going to uh, suffer a lot in this pit stop phase here, having to stack behind Lewis Hamilton there. So we've moved into effective P2 in this race. I thought that was very interesting, though, as we come into the racetrack once again. Vettel did the undercut on us, and he's going to go around the outside into turn two. It's worth noting, though, that we got the second gear glitch coming out of the pit lane again, so I think that's cost us potentially a position here, and yes, it has. Uh, Vettel sneaking up the inside into turn three. We had cold tyres. Nothing we could really do there in comparison to him, but now the end of lap nine, we can see all the midfield runners have pulled into the pit lane there for their first stop, including Lewis Hamilton. So he came in on the previous lap, and he's come in again. I'm not too sure if it's for a penalty or a new set of tyres, but as you can see on the replay here, Hamilton just follows the queue into the pit lane. What are you doing, Lewis? Is, is this another dud Mercedes strategy here where they just... I, I honestly don't know. This game is full of glitches sometimes, but I'm going to take it. Lap 10, we can see where giving Daniel Kvyat a massive hurry up through the final sequence of corners here in Australia. But, um, yeah, he was yet to make a pit stop, so that's why he was going so slowly. He allowed Vettel to get away by a few seconds now, and he's broken DRS. So this next stint of the race is going to be a little bit interesting here. But Rosberg, after getting a very slow pit stop, he is now in a second place. So this race has... Massively changed. The, the two Mercedes cars, they were dominate, dominating on lap 5. Now we can see Vettel has a massive lead. Rosberg is in second. And Bottas moving into P3 momentarily before we're getting P2 again. So Vettel has come in for the undercut. I'm coming in the very next lap. And Rosberg has stayed out for another lap. So very interesting strategies at play here. I believe the guys who came in on lap 10 may possibly be doing a two-stop 
What's going on? What's this? Go. Pick pick crew. Service him. Wow. I, I don't believe this. I've seen this countless times in season one of career mode. The AI getting stuck in the pit lane. Finally, for us, we've been stuck too. So don't tell me this is gonna this is gonna cost us. We're not gonna finish this race. We're not gonna leave this pit lane, are we? Fifty odd seconds have passed. We're now a lap down. Our race is over. And that's a win for Nico Rosberg at the Australian Grand Prix here in Melbourne. What a result for this German driver. What a fantastic result for Nico. He'll be so happy to start the season. On... I'm so done with this game. The AI, after I retired from the race, they continued on, and I ended up in last place. How is that fair? Honestly, Codemaster, sort out your game. This, these glitches they've existed for the last three or four weeks, and still, they have not been fixed. You, uh, I don't know. I'm honestly out of words, guys, but I thought long and hard after retiring from this race whether I should continue on to Malaysia or do this race again because I felt like you guys deserve more of a race. So at the end of the day, I've decided to restart this race. You know, I thought it was pretty unfair on you guys that you guys miss out on a tremendous finish for that race. Considering Hamilton was way down the order, um, we're just going to restart and go again. So here we go for take two here in the Australian Grand Prix. Once again, another terrible start as no traction users will often uh, come to terms with. But in the turn one, we go around the outside of Sebastian Vettel. No, we go around the outside of Raikkonen, my bad. So into P4 already, and in this race, I vowed to, I don't know, be a lot more aggressive, be a lot more forceful with my moves, and uh, just the overall race strategy, I suppose. So here we go, lap two on the back of Sebastian Vettel. And since I've already done, what, 14 laps in the previous Australian Grand Prix, I was sort of more in the zone, more, I don't know, comfortable with the car and how it handled on heavy fuel. So we should be a little bit quicker in this race overall. So going round the outside of Vettel, already on lap two, we throw up the hand in frustration and move into the podium position. So now, lap five, we're trying to chase down both those Mercedes cars. We know that they're going to be slow at the end of the stint, and here we are, lap six. We've already caught up to the back of Rosberg. Hamilton in P1 at the moment, so he's going to be our ultimate goal in this race, trying to go around the outside of Nico Rosberg there. We got blocked off a little bit there, but once again into this braking zone. Still can't find a way around it. We might have to wait for DRS, so we'll see uh, how that goes, how a, a Toro Rosso fares up against a Mercedes power unit. But we go up the inside into the penultimate corner. Nico is still there on the inside for the final corner. We hang around the outside, almost do a drift, lose the back end, and still we manage to get that position as well. That, I don't know, it's hard to portray just how scary that move was around the outside into the final corner. I don't have a replay of it, so we're just going to show the uh, original move once again. Round the outside and just losing the back end. I had to do a massive autocorrect there, but uh, we managed to get the move done into P2. So lap 7, I think we're coming in on the end of this lap anyway, so we can see Hamilton is struggling on his rear tyres. So yeah, looking very interesting in this second attempt here. We're definitely a lot closer to the lead of this race than what we were in the first one. Up the inside, into the pit lane. Hamilton going so slowly on the entrance to the pit, so we just took the move there. I don't know if it's illegal or not, but we didn't get penalised for it, so we're just going to continue on. Could that be the overtaking move that wins us this race? We're going to have to wait and see. The pit stop is fairly slow, and that was because we had to wait for Hamilton, so the move into the pit lane, it didn't account to anything anyway so lap nine we can see Sebastian Vettel going up the inside into turn one and does he get the move done no he doesn't so he stays in p3 at the moment I'm losing my voice already and I've only been going for what 14 minutes it's just been so much action in this race and I I don't know I think I edit my videos a little bit too short and I have to squeeze in all this I don't know, shouting and stuff and trying to keep up it's just it doesn't work sometimes so I'll need to possibly make my videos longer just so I can talk about the races a little bit more because I feel like I just miss out a lot of action that happens but anyway lap 14 uh, we're coming in for that dreaded second pit stop this time we don't get held up in the pits by our teammate or a Lotus so that's a, a positive that we're able to continue on in this race coming out of turn one now we just rejoin 
in front of Felipe Nazza, who was doing a two-star, I must add, and Sebastian Vettel, who, are, who were effectively battling for third place in this race. So holding around the outside of Nazza there on cold tyres, it's so hard to defend from the AI when the, the tyres are so cold. I've got to say, our pace early on in stints is not good, but we continue to find a way to get faster as the race goes on. So that's, I don't know, very interesting. It's almost backwards to how I'm used to doing a career mode, especially like if you compare it to F1 2014 or 2013. You know, I was always faster at the start of the race or the start of the stints and just as the tire wear kicked in, I was nowhere. So it's, it's a nice change, isn't it, to be faster than the AI in terms of tire wear. So lap 21, we're coming in for another pit stop here, going on to the prime tires for what should be our final run to the finish line here. So we're looking very good in this race. Nico Rosberg and Sebastian Vettel still behind us in this Grand Prix. But Vettel, for the entirety of this race, he's been very threatening. Once again, trying to hang around the outside. He just doesn't... He doesn't think, does he? He just he can hold around the outside, but he just continues to run himself off the racetrack sometimes. But anyway, lap 23, we can see we're on the back of Daniel Ricciardo. He's also doing a two-stop as well. So it looks like the two-stoppers are playing themselves into this race very nicely with a good strategy. As you can see, following him through turn two there, we're going to have DRS and maybe sneak it up the inside into turn three. We do have fresher tyres, but for whatever reason, I was a little bit spooked didn't feel like a move was really on there so we'll need to wait for another opportunity to present itself maybe some DRS on the next lap but we're running out of time now lap 24 in this race and the leader Lewis Hamilton is getting away a little bit he's about five seconds up the road so I think if we get in front of Vettel Vettel I'm looking at a Red Bull and I think it's Vettel if we can get in front of Ricardo as soon as possible we could potentially have an attack at Hamilton if his tyre wear is bad enough like it was in the first stint. But anyway, going up the inside into the third sector. Now that's P2, job done. And next up is Massa. So Felipe Massa has somehow in inherited the lead of this Grand Prix. Vettel on the attack once again into turn one. And he can't quite get the move done on Ricardo, but I can tell you he did get the move done at turn three. So, penultimate lap now. Massa leads this race. He's doing a two-stop. But what has happened to Hamilton? I have absolutely no idea. But as you can see on the replay here, the Mana car decides to park it on the apex here. And he almost wiped me out. That, what a silly place to, to break and just let me through. But anyway, this is coming on to the final lap now. This is on board with Lewis Hamilton. He's battling with Felipe Massa. So that means he's a lap down. I... I don't understand what's happened to Hamilton for him to lose a lap, lose the lead of this Grand Prix, and now be trying to unlap himself from Felipe Massa. But I'm not complaining at all. Uh, if, if the championship leader wants to be a lap down, then let him be a lap down. But he's trying to battle with uh, Felipe Massa here, and he's actually holding him up quite a bit because every time he gets in front of Massa, he then has to let him through. So it, it's turning out to be a very interesting set of circumstances here. Massa and Hamilton going very slowly through the final of the middle sector chicane now. And this battle for the lead is well and truly on. Thank you, Lewis Hamilton. You've done all that you can for me now to try and get me into the lead of this race. It's going to be a showdown now between myself and Felipe Massa coming into the final two corners of this Australian Grand Prix. Up the inside, our only chance in this Grand Prix. We've taken the lead, but Massa has the inside line for the final corner. We've taken him for the lead of this race, but no! We have run out of fuel on the run-up to the line. We have lost this race. Wow. I honestly thought we had that, but then we ran out of fuel and only just finished in second place. What a race. At the top of the leaderboard after the first race here in Australia is Felipe Massa. A great drive from the very experienced Brazilian. Felipe is well liked up and down the paddock, so this race win will be hugely popular, especially it's his first victory since Brazil 2008 and his first at Williams. After all that excitement, it's time for a lie down, I think. 
Thanks for joining us and goodbye until the next race. Wow. What an Australian Grand Prix that has been. First race of the season and we've pretty much continued on from where we left off in the finale in Abu Dhabi. Just two fantastic races in a row. You don't get that very often in career mode. But today, Felipe Massa gets his first win since 2008. Uh, Lewis Hamilton finishing way down the order in 13th place. So this championship already has been blown wide open. Uh, we finished in second place. Just an absolutely crazy race. He could not have asked for a more dramatic Australian Grand Prix. The first attempt, uh, it would have been a very interesting race as well with Hamilton way down the order too. So I'm very interested to see how this championship unfolds now with the likes of Mercedes trying to fight back. They're obviously the fastest car on the grid, but what can we do and what can Ferrari do if we're just that little bit more consistent than Mercedes? Can we possibly mount a surprise championship threat and really uh, give these guys something to think about. But the likes of the two stoppers, they did very well in this race. Uh, was not expecting Felipe Massa to win that race. It almost came out of nowhere 2010 style. So that's been this very first race of F1 2015 career mode for season two. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. Obviously like this video if you want to see more videos like this in the future. And um, that's pretty much it. First race of season two done. It's now in Malaysia and China. Some of my more bogey tracks, but it's going to be interesting to see how the Tour also fares at those two tracks. So until then, guys, I'll see you next time.